as a young girl growing up, I thought a real artist was a white man who was sad, brilliant, lonely, toiling in obscurity before his posthumous fame, prolific beyond measure. A real artist wasn't interested in other people. But that was okay, because he was a genius. The genius created his work in isolation. Until I was exposed to other types of artists as a young woman, I clung to this mythology of the real artist like a talisman, accepting it as truth. Fearing I would never live up to this genius, I struggled to create and even gave it up altogether for a while. But unable to stifle my voice for too long, I opted in private to return to my native language, drawing. I drew my guts out for a while. I came to realize that all of my work interprets the body as a site of struggle and resistance. Over the years, I've expressed this in a variety of ways, but in one particular series, I shot my paintings with bullets and then painted blossoms around the holes. And they sold well. But that was not enough to sustain my interest because I began to make them just to sell. I wanted to challenge that, myth that mythology of the artist creating in isolation. I thought, who could I share this with where it would have added meaning and resonance? I'd long been interested in an organization called Homeboy Industries, which serves gang-involved and formerly incarcerated youth. I brought the idea for a collaborative project to its founder and head, Father Greg, or G, and his door was literally wide open. He embraced me and the project. I asked the participants I worked with at Homeboy to tell their stories through the democratic medium of collage and was almost immediately rendered speechless by their bravery and by the creative risks they were willing to take. People dove in. They were willing to incorporate their most precious, most personal objects into their artwork. One woman, used letters she'd written to her family from prison. Another, an article about when she boosted her first car at 13. Still another, his paños, exquisite ballpoint pen drawings on handkerchiefs. And yet another, the only x-ray he had of the bullet lodged at the base of his spine, which caused him chronic pain. They were not worried at all about being judged. They just rolled up their sleeves and did it. They told me where to aim for the bullet holes and what color to paint the blossoms around them, and I shot the works. Here are two examples. The end results of our collaboration were so much more compelling than my work alone. One of the men observed that if he'd wanted to, he could hang his artwork from the car in his driveway and he'd have an art gallery. I loved this idea. He was right. An art gallery doesn't have to be a forbidding or exclusive venue. An art gallery doesn't even need walls. The rich tradition of murals in Los Angeles is a testament to this. I realized what we really had was this extraordinary conversation that was unbeholden to any institution of permission. Nobody told us what we could or couldn't do. It remains the most important project of my creative life, as it taught me that including other voices in storytelling should be an ongoing life goal. It ignited in me a passion I could not have foreseen. I wanted to do it again on an even bigger plane. Seeking that same feeling of art as a medium for connection, I started drawing in virtual reality, or VR, because I wanted to generate an even more empathic connection in the literal, physical body of the person who would stand in or move through my drawings. The poet, Ocean Vong, writes, maybe the body is the only question an answer can't extinguish. Drawing in 360 was an almost ecstatic experience. But because it was such new and unchartered territory, 
it was also infinite and offered no clear answers. The medium is so powerful that everyone experiences it in their body, and the results can sometimes make people literally sick. Early on in my experimenting with VR, I had one woman take the headset off in tears and say, I hate the future. <laughs> Another said, I can't tell if I'm in heaven or hell. But as effective as VR is in creating empathy, there were still limitations to creating connection, true connection, that more people could share. VR remained a singular, and by extension, exclusive experience. To be in the, in the VR drawings, you either needed the hardware, the VR hardware, or you had to physically come to my studio. So when I had the opportunity to create a free app using augmented reality, or AR, that would allow people to, put, to experience my VR drawings and studio in the comfort of real life, I grabbed it. It seemed like the greatest opportunity to break down walls and challenge paradigms that I could possibly imagine. AR is accessible to almost anyone with a smartphone or tablet, using the camera as a kind of director's lens. In the app, I encouraged people to place, move through, or record my drawings and studio anywhere they wanted, anywhere on the planet. Their choice. Think the gallery in the driveway, only now the gallery is the world. It was absolutely terrifying to go public with work created in such privacy. But when I remembered how open the homeboy participants were, when I shared my bullet paintings with them, it strengthened my resolve. The results were mind-blowing. People, often complete strangers, were able to express their interpretations in ways I could never have conceived of on my own. Someone put a drawing on the five train to the Bronx. Another, above seats in a classroom in Qatar. Drawings showed up on the carousel, on the baggage claim carousel at LAX airport. and in a cathedral. Against the Cleveland Steelyards. Falling down around Angkor Wat in Cambodia. In a New Orleans cemetery. through the U.S.-Mexico border wall. If anything underscored the borderless nature of art, this was it. In aggregate, what people came up with was so much more than the sum of any parts. It was like this ongoing, ever-expanding, public art exhibition that was determined by individuals versus by institutions. It was defined by people who had something to say or just had an idea they wanted to try out, instead of someone limiting their choices, telling them what they should do or what they should want or what was important or what was worthy of their time. It could be serious or not. What people did with it span the entire spectrum of the human experience. It turns out, you don't have to be solitary or tortured to make art. There are so many untold and untapped stories which, when we experience them, make us more interesting and interested people. Further adaptations of this medium 
including, include v GPS technology, which allow us to locate artworks in site-specific locations all over the globe. Fellow artists working topically choose a site for its cultural, historical, or political significance to them, and together we place or lock these artworks in AR in those locations. You can't see it with the naked eye, but using the lens of your, of your smartphone or your tablet, the artwork will appear in AR at those locations. This collaborative project invites people using the app to physically visit the sites themselves. A kind of Pokemon Go, <laughs> but rich with content and intention. Together, we are using this technology subversively and unapologetically to prompt thoughtful discourse in sites as wide-ranging as the border wall that cuts through the beach in Tijuana, Mexico, to Liberty Island in New York Harbor, to the site of the recent massacre in Las Vegas, Nevada. The opportunity for community engagement and activism using this technology is staggering. What if we reached out to individual communities and asked them what they want to see? or whose artwork they want to see represented in their neighborhoods, and where. AR allows for a public art experience that includes dialogues and responses in communities that have long been ignored or dismissed. It can prompt people from all over to explore the wide range of settings, art, and voices that flourish here in abundance. As the Brazilian novelist Clarice Lispector says, I'm after what is lurking behind thought. What might be revealed? What deeper truths can we learn from other people by offering access to this technology which would allow them to express themselves? As a girl, I thought a real artist didn't need anyone. They were simply inspired. Now I believe a real artist is someone open to fearless collaboration who risks judgment to speak straight from their soul. <laughs>